the fan. The Audible is a player-driven Vikings podcast, bringing you guys closer to the team each and every week throughout the season. We'll have Justin Jefferson, we'll have Michael Pierce, we'll have plenty of other player guests hosting the show alongside Ben Lieber and I. And as promised, we got second year phenom wide receiver Justin Jefferson how you doing man I'm good man good to good to be here and good to uh, go to year two with with some confidence you don't know who Jordan Jefferson is I'm gonna I'm give you a quick rundown this guy appeared in the national championship as a quarterback at LSU he was starting quarterback from 2008 to 2011 My parents were very, very supportive. My family was very supportive. They always came to a lot of the games. So Justin was able to spend a lot of time, a lot of personal time around players, around guys like Patrick. Good evening. Tonight, we kick off a new experience. Over the years, you've asked for more information, more stories, and more access to your favorite players. And with the launch of this new show, we aim to bring that to you each and every episode. Our first guest tonight is the sophomore sensation, Justin Jefferson. His older brother, Jordan, also joins us, and both are stars in their own right. Before we get to those guys, my co-host for the year is former Vikings linebacker, Ben Lieber. So without further ado, let's have some fun and get into our newest venture for you, the fan. Welcome to the Audible presented by Verizon. Hey, hey, welcome to the first edition of the Audible podcast presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson alongside Ben Lieber. And Ben, I know fans are asking and are wondering, what is the Audible? Why are we sitting here in these two seats? And I got an answer for you. The Audible is a player driven Vikings podcast, bringing you guys closer to the team each and every week throughout the season. This year, we'll have Justin Jefferson. We'll have Michael Pierce. We'll have plenty of other player guests hosting the show alongside Ben Lieber and I. And we'll talk on the field, off the field content, and just, I won't say free for all. It's fun. It's fun. Fun. It'll be fun. We'll do a, we'll do a little bit of X's and O's for those hardcore people out there, but we also are going to have some content to get to know these players a little bit deeper. Um, so it's going to be a fun show. So it'll be an hour-long show on KFAN 100.3 that will air on Thursdays. And then on Fridays on Fox 9, it'll be a 30-minute TV show. So I'm excited. I'm so excited to get this going with you, Ben. Every single segment, unlike the first segment, we'll start with a trivia question. So I'm not going to start with the trivia question right here because I know you got to get out of here before yeah. Justin Jefferson joins. Of course, you, I heard you don't like the guy or something. What's We've the- got some beef, you know. <laughs> He and, I, he and I go way back. Even though we played in different eras, K-State, LSU, we don't like each other. So, no, uh, unfortunately, um, we'll not be with him this week, but uh, count on me every, each and every week after that. Each and every week, Justin Jefferson will be here every four weeks from here on out, so I'm excited to get going. First topic today is the first time the Vikings have been on the road, well, started the season on the road since 2016, and you're familiar with being on the road in week one at Cincinnati at Paul Brown Stadium. Your rookie year in the NFL, week one, you were playing for the San Diego Chargers. You guys won 34-6 to against the Cincinnati Bengals. What do you remember about that game? Uh, I, remember, I remember how nervous I was. Uh, I can tell you that. It was nerve-wracking. You know, you're, I was a rookie, and any rookie that, that sort of cracks the starting lineup, um, it's one thing to be told in practice, like, hey, dude, you're going to be with the ones this for today. And, that, and that's kind of how it was approached by Marty Schottenheimer. It's like, we're going to give this a trial run. Yeah. Like, figure this out. Yeah. We're going to figure some things out. We're going to let you go with the ones. And so I really thought it was just a temporary thing. Um, and then I never kind of went back down the depth chart. So then all of a sudden now we're getting ready for the game. And it's just like, my family's going. So I got to deal with like the tickets and, and all that stuff. And I'm just super nervous. And you know, excited, but you just don't know how you're going to stack up against, you know, true NFL competition outside of practice. And it was hot. I remember running down on kickoff and I get done with the very first rep of the season, my very first rep of my career. And I, I see stars. I'm like running. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Like, it's so hot here. Like, 
how am I going to make it through this game where I just like sprinted for 50 yards yeah. and I'm, I'm already like exhausted. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it was just nervous energy okay. um, and all that stuff because I was fine throughout the game. Um, but it was hot. It was humid. Um, and then I, I ended up getting my first sack against Gus Farrat, mm -hmm. who ends up being my Vikings teammate many years down the road. Um, so everything kind of came full circle. But in that moment, you know, it's funny, that particular play that they called a blitz, I, I run down a hill, um, I kind of elude the running back, and, and my head was down. So I was like, my head was down, my attention was on the running back, I get past him, and, and all, I, all I remember is the quarterback kind of making this motion. So as I'm like getting up and defeating the block, I thought he threw the ball. So then I, I just sort of like haphazardly like, like run into him. And, the, I, and I get the sack because he pump faked and he held onto it. And I just kind of wrapped him up and took him to the ground. But it was hilarious and watching it on film because the guys were just killing me on Monday. They're like, what were you doing? I'm like, I thought he threw the ball. I don't know. And they're like, you know, it was all, it was all fun and game. Man, that's an interesting story. And just speaking of just the, the nervous energy that you have week one, whether you're in year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. I know on the offensive side of the ball, Usually offensive players are saying, hey, you know, I can score a touchdown in the first two or three plays when I touch the ball. But until I get hit, like I'm nervous. Yeah. What is it like on the defensive side of the ball? I think it's the same. Um, there have been many games where, you know, let's say that you're, you open up with a passing team. And for whatever reason, my particular position as a linebacker, I just wasn't involved in a lot of action. You, you do feel out of it. You know, there, there's been games where it's, we've gone the whole first quarter and I'm like, I don't even, I just feel like I'm floating out there. And then you, you almost like intentionally want to go run into something. <laughs> They're going like, I'm just going to go hit that offensive lineman just, just to kind of wake myself up. Um, no, it's all the same. I think, I think until you feel the, the impact and you just, you know that you're in the game, that's when everything starts to click. Well, the players, they will feel the impact this upcoming Sunday. They will hear the impact that this Paul Brown Stadium crowd will have, uh, I guess, this minute, the Cincinnati Bengals 12th man of, of some sort. They'll feel that also because fans are there. The energy will be there. We'll be on the road at the game. What are you most expecting from both of these teams? We were talking a little bit off camera, and, I mean, if you look at them on paper, it's kind of even. Yeah, it's like, it's like you can look at this Bengals team and say, well, they've got, they've got question marks with the interior offensive line. Well, you can direct that question right back at the Vikings. You know, I, I think everybody in Cincinnati, for everything that they're questioning about us, it's the same reflection on them. So I think it goes both ways. They had, they had problems with the, their interior offensive line last year. They had problems stopping the run last year. They had questions in the secondary. Um, now, they have an injured, they had an injured quarterback, which we didn't have. But there are a lot of question marks. You know, they're sort of breaking in a new kicker, although he was perfect in the preseason. They feel pretty happy about him. We've had some kicking issues for many years, you know. So if, when it comes down to special teams, there's some question marks there. So... Um, I think both teams have a lot of talent, but for us in the Vikings, we haven't seen that talent play in the preseason. So we have all those same questions, but yet we didn't really get anything answered in the preseason. So I want to see, uh, see all those things come to fruition and make sure that we actually do have a really good team. Well, one question I got to answer earlier this week was who our right tackle of the future will be. Mm -hmm. Brian O'Neill signed an extension this week, five years worth 92 million. He's facing up against Trey Hendrickson, a guy from the Saints last year. They ended up with 13 and a half sacks. Mm -hmm. This Bengals defense, I think they spent over 200, over 200 million on their defense yeah. in the past three years. Trey Hendrickson is a guy that they're going to expect a lot of uh, production from. So when you look at that matchup on Sunday, how do you see things playing out there? Well, I imagine they're going to move him around too. Okay. You know, I, I think that they're going to they're going to try to move him around a little bit on third down. Uh, to try to find the best matchup for him. Um, but I, I'm going to favor Brian O'Neill in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Mm -hmm. Like, Brian O'Neill's faced everybody, you know. You know, we even heard this, this uh, preseason how Von Miller from mm -hmm. Denver, who they had that extended practice time with them before leading up to the, the preseason game, you know, applauded, you know, Brian O'Neill. Best right tackle in the game. Yeah, just saying, like, he's, he's one of the best. Yeah. And, and when you have a guy like Vaughn who has... You've beaten everybody in the league yeah. and is a phenomenal player. When he goes against him in practice and like, hey, man, you got my respect. I think you're one of the best in the league. I'm going to take our chances with one of the best in the league mm -hmm. versus Trey Hendrickson. Defensive side of the ball, a lot of veterans on this Vikings defense. This 
Bengals offense still trying to figure things out. I know we said, you know, we'll take our running back committee versus their running back committee, but their running back committee versus our front seven. Your thoughts? Well, again, we we don't know. Hmm. We don't know. We saw we saw some bits and pieces of Tomlinson and Pierce in the preseason, and I think they looked phenomenal. I, I think the thing that they did a really good job of was they not only defeated the block and handled the blocks in front of them, they played with extension and separation. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is they, they had great hat in hands and they controlled the offensive linemen by extending their arms and they were able to kind of peek okay. around, play their gap, but then also get off and make plays. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's necessarily all about like they have to chew up double teams. Mm-hmm. We've got two guys in there that can be playmakers mm-hmm. along with Sheldon Richardson. So yes, they can defeat the blocks and they can chew up gaps, but also they can get off those blocks and make some plays. So I'm really excited about what those guys can do. You know, their running, their running style is very, very much downhill. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's going to play well for us. Yeah. Because things are going to declare like this. Yeah. When you have guys kind of like our scheme where a guy might take it front side and hit it back side, mm-hmm. you got to be a little more disciplined and read so much. But when you know that ball's coming downhill right now, Quick. It's, it's a hit, pop, get off, and make a play. Right. So I think uh, our front seven matches up very well against them. All right, so Paul Allen earlier this week said he's expecting three sacks from this defense. He mm-hmm. said Daniel Hunter might get three. You said well, he Sharp. Said, he said six total. Daniel's going to get three yeah. himself. Oh, my. If, if that's the case, I don't think anybody would be upset about that. Joe Burrow was sacked 15 times in two games last year. Yeah. He played 10 games last year and was sacked 32 times. So the opportunity will be there. It's just the fact of us making the plays when the opportunity presents itself. So just the overall sack versus interception. You got a prediction at all? Well, I, had, I have a prediction with Breland. I think Breland's going to get at least one interception. Okay. I think it's right for, for him to use his skills that he possesses as far as being a really tight coverage guy, um, closing off a lot of windows. And... You know, he's got some dog in him. Like, yeah, he does. he's going to go after that ball. He's going to try to make plays in the ball. He's going to use his instincts. And he's not afraid to make mistakes. And I think as a corner, you have to have that. Mm-hmm. So I think he walks away with at least one. Um, this offense for Cincinnati, they would be smart to not have a lot of drop back, to not have <laughs> a lot of five and seven step. They know that they've got a quarterback that's coming off a knee injury. Get the ball out of his hands quick. Quick. You know, are we going to have an opportunity to get some sacks? Yes, probably going to have to come off a play action. Our guys going to have to guess right. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the right blitz off a play action. Um, And or our offense is going to have to put some points on the board early and force them into deeper drops and force them to get the ball down the field and have more time in the pocket. That's the only way I think that we can can get to him because I think the wise thing to do for him and for that offense and for longevity of of this season for Joe Burrow is – Ball out quick. Ball out quick. Ball out quick. Three step. Get your hands up. Maybe maybe some deflections and PBUs from the guys up front, but maybe early on I don't see as many sacks. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Purple will do at Paul Brown Stadium this week. I know you got to get out of here. I know you want to get out of here before Justin Jefferson gets here. So I, <laughs> I won't hold you any longer. But thank you again, man. I, I mean, every single week from here on out. Yeah, man. We're going to be doing this every week. It's going to be awesome. We're going to yeah. have guests. We're going to have fun content. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're going to laugh and smile a lot. And I hope you guys as listeners laugh and smile with us. And, um, you know, we've got uh, 16 more of these to do. 16 more. And that's a minimum because mm. I think that we're going to have some playoff ones, playoff mm. episodes as well. Well, we'll get your predictions on that later in the year. Ben Lieber, see you next time. Thanks, Gabe. We'll be right back with the Audible presented by Verizon with special guest Jordan Jefferson and his brother slash player host for today, Justin Jefferson. The Voyage delivers unprecedented access to fans who will be able to get inside the office of Coach Mike Zimmer and have an insider's look and listen during his talks with the team. Viewers also hear directly from current Vikings who will be writing outcomes of games through their play on the field. Watch bi-weekly during the NFL season on the Vikings digital and social channels, including Vikings.com, the Vikings mobile app, Vikings Now, the team's connected TV app, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Watch today and find out more at vikings.com slash voyage. 
Subscribe to the official YouTube channel of the Minnesota Vikings to get all the latest video content from the Vikings Entertainment Network. Watch segments from TV shows such as Vikings Game Plan and Vikings Connected. Catch original digital programming like The Voyage and Vikings Post Game Live. Hear from players and coaches, plus more. Visit vikings.com slash YouTube to subscribe. Fan. The Vikings Entertainment Network takes you inside the walls of the TCO Performance Center each week via the Minnesota Vikings podcast, which features exclusive guests including players, coaches, staff, and experts across the NFL. Listen to interviews, press conferences, highlights, quotes from the locker room, and much more. Subscribe on all major podcast platforms to listen. And for information, visit vikings.com slash MVP. After every Vikings game this season, make sure to log on to the team's digital and social platforms to watch Vikings Post Game Live, a new streaming post game show providing fans with highlights, post game sound from head coach Mike Zimmer and players, analysis, and much more. Fans can watch live or on demand via Vikings.com, the Vikings mobile app, Vikings Now, the team's connected TV app, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. For more, visit Vikings.com slash post game show. Yo, welcome back to the Audible presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson from the Vikings Entertainment Network. And as promised, we got the second year phenom wide receiver, Justin Jefferson. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Good to good to be here and good to uh, go to year two with with some confidence. You got some confidence and you got big bro behind you as I mean, physically support, but literal support also in joining this conversation. Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing fabulous. Always a good day. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. And I know uh, we were talking a little off camera. If you don't know who Jordan Jefferson is, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. This guy appeared in the national championship as a quarterback at LSU. He was a starting quarterback from 2008 to 2011. Of course, he was signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an undrafted free agent in 2012. And most importantly, he's from Louisiana. And I know people from the boot love the boot. And that's that's home. And I know you're up here in Minnesota now, and now you got your brother here putting putting numbers up and putting numbers out um, and showing out. I guess showing out in year number two. But before we get to the football talk, we we, we got to start this this segment off with the trivia question. Jordan, Justin, Jordan, from here on out, every single segment we start with the trivia question. So question number one. Y'all ready? Yeah, of course. Y'all, both of y'all seem a little nervous right now. Hey man, I'm just <laughs> waiting for the question. <laughs> All right. How many current LSU Tigers are on the Cincinnati Bengals roster? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, four. D, four. Let's go with D, four. Talk to me. Names. I need some names. All right, we got Joe Burrow. Okay. We got Jamar Chase, Tyler Shelvin, and Thad Moss, Thaddeus Moss. You on it. You got my dudes, man. (laughs) Hey, I know my dudes. I know where my dudes go at, so, (laughs) hey, I know. So you got the opportunity to be on the same field as these guys. I know y'all call it NFLSU. Yeah. That, that's the that's the term. Yeah. And now you get a chance to be all be on this. I think it's what seven players on the same field this week. If seven. you include Danil and P two, uh, Jordan. I mean, you played. Didn't you play with P two at some point? Absolutely. Uh, me and Patrick were roommates. So being roommates and having JJ. I know we are, we all heard the story a couple of times. JJ is in the the dorm room. Yeah. You know. Doing running routes with you and P2 playing coverage every now and then, but just having him, you know, watch every single set that you make, of course, as long as, as well as your brother Ricky. What was that like for you? Uh, it was pretty good. I, um, you know, I, I met Patrick early in my, uh, like coming out of high school. I knew about him coming from Florida because I honestly, once you commit, you start to pay attention to the class. So I met Patrick at the spring game and we 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 connected instantly. So throughout throughout time, you know, I, I start to learn more about his family. He learned more about mine. And obviously Ricky and Justin had a strong interest in football. And my parents were very, very supportive. My family was very supportive. They always came to a lot of the games. So Justin was able to spend a lot of time, a lot of personal time around players, around guys like Patrick that were able to see him at, as a very young age. So uh, we used to sit in the dorm rooms all the time and talk about, uh, you know, my younger brother's Little League football games, high school football games. And to see uh, both of these guys on the same team at the same time, man, it's, it's, it's a very exciting uh, moment for myself because I know where the connection first started. 
Well, I think the connection between you, Ricky, and JJ is your is your mom's cheesecake. <laughs> you got You got you to you got to talk about that a little bit because I, I've heard about the cheesecake on like I've, I've heard about it on yeah. like three different occasions. Talk to me. Crazy part is, every well, most people in my family can pretty much cook. So, okay. uh, so my dad would be doing all of the, like the gumbos, <laughs> the crawfish. Uh, crawfish etouffee, like uh -huh. all of the big dishes. And uh, my mom and my uh, aunt would be doing like the cookies, the cakes, <laughs> the cheesecakes, uh, all of the desserts really. And uh, oh my God, it's amazing. Every holiday we have, we have the cheesecake and we have like the different cakes, caramel cake. Oh my God. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Tastes amazing. So the way you're talking about this food, it sounds like you should have been playing linebacker. Should have, but look at me. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> Certain holidays, that's when a lot of family members just start putting some of these, uh, you know, special recipes together. So the special thing about the, the cheesecake is it has a praline crust. It's, you know, like a cinnamon candy style flavor. The cheesecake is very rich because it has a lot of evaporated milk and condensed milk. So, uh, it used to be a personal request from me for my mom and my dad and also my aunt to bring it, bring the cheesecakes during certain holidays. And I had this cheesecake in the refrigerator and my teammates would ask for a slice. And I used to have to be uh, strategic on how many slices I'm giving because we all knew uh, how good the cheesecake was. So once Patrick and my other roommates, you know, along with Justin's teammates as well, start to get introduced to the cheesecake it just became a a a, a personal request from those guys so they started to contact my family <laughs> <laughs> hey man i need to start selling that cheesecake that's what it sounds like right <laughs> he got all the ingredients hey jordan i'm, I'm the baby brother in my family so I, my brother has a, as being an older brother, he has plenty of stories about me that I probably won't tell people, but he's not embarrassed to tell people. So I need just a, not an embarrassing story, but just a <laughs> funny story about Justin that not many people know about. Uh, uh, one of the um, funny stories, um, this is when the NCAA college football game was out. And <laughs> it was a, a very, uh, you know, like a lot of kids liked it. So I used to come home uh, during, say, spring, during the spring holiday or Christmas holidays. And I would just spend time at the house and Justin would be playing NCAA football. Well, when he's playing NCAA football, there was a Kanye West album. <laughs> <laughs> And this dude will be playing NCAA football to three, four in the morning, singing every word of the 808's Heartbreak album. And it used to be so funny to the point to where I would jump in and start singing it with him. <laughs> so one of his one of his favorite albums back then was the 808's Heartbreak by Kanye West. And the night. I yeah. <laughs> We'll be right back with Justin Jefferson and our special guest, his brother, Jordan Jefferson, right here on the Audible presented by Verizon. Download the official mobile app of the Minnesota Vikings today for either your Apple or Android device. Watch game highlights, press conferences, and exclusive Vikings Entertainment Network content. Stay up to date on the latest team news and much more. Customize your app experience via push notifications so you never miss out on breaking news or fan promotions. Search for Minnesota Vikings in the app or Google Play stores. For information, it's vikings.com slash app. After every Vikings game this season, make sure to log on to the team's digital and social platforms to watch Vikings Post Game Live, a new streaming post game show providing fans with highlights, post game sound from head coach Mike Zimmer and players, analysis, and much more. Fans can watch live or on demand via Vikings.com, the Vikings mobile app, Vikings Now, the team's connected TV app, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. For more, visit Vikings.com slash post game show. Dot org. Pat
pass or play free to play fantasy style game build your weekly lineup via digital trading cards that are randomly given to you users can elect to keep the first card sent to them and insert that player into their lineup or pass and move on to the next card if a user chooses to pass on all three cards they can come back the next day for one new card fans can win weekly and season-long prizes for information visit vikings.com slash pass or play your favorite childhood memory of jordan Oh, so many of them. Um, I mean, I'll probably have to say, um, well, I mean, I have so many memories of the college days uh, of him just really just playing. But I mean, at home, summertime, um, mom and dad would be at the house, uh, just be us three in there just doing chores or whatever we doing. And uh, in the house is always this how it goes. Me and Ricky will always be in the fight. And Ricky and Jordan will always be in a fight. So Ricky getting it both ways. <laughs> but Ricky, will, I mean, Jordan would be protecting me because Ricky will be picking on me. So yeah. every single day, summertime in the house, we'll all be fighting. Uh, Jordan, I mean, Jordan picking on Ricky, Ricky picking on me. I'm messing with Ricky. It's, it's all a, a bundle. But, I mean, it's too many stories for me to, to say. All right. So if, I mean, <laughs> if that's the case, Jordan, how would you describe Justin, as a kid, in one word, energetic. <laughs> and the reason, the reason why I said uh, the reason why I say that because you know he was always fond of going outside, uh, playing ball in the yard, or just actively doing things around the house. So just actively doing things, JJ. You said you were always cleaning up. So you and Ricky had the chores, and I guess JJ. I mean Jordan was doing other stuff. So like, what did the chores look like? Were you the the person to clean the bathroom, wash dishes, like who, like how was that split up? Uh, we always had pretty much the same choice, right? We had the same choice every single day. Everybody had their own responsibilities. Okay. So uh, Ricky would be in charge. Well, we'll kind of go back and forth of the dishes, but okay. uh, Ricky will have dishes someday. I'll be vacuuming. Um, you know, of course, we clean our own rooms. Uh, you know, clean bathrooms. I'll clean the bathroom one day. Ricky will clean the other bathroom. Joe was mostly like the the demander okay. you know you clean this you clean that you do this delegate yeah <laughs> facilitate because if it wasn't done i would be the one getting in trouble <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got you always hear the, well jordan you the oldest it's, it's your fault <laughs> exactly exactly so i i used to have to facilitate you know in the midst of everything that was going on at the time but it was all good times man Mm. Man, so what's one thing that Justin can't live without? And I'll have you answer this question, I, too. I already know what he's about to say. Oh, uh, video games. I knew he was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> what you playing right now? I've been on that duty hard. I okay. okay. I've, I've been on the Madden a little bit, too. Uh, I've been playing Jordan at the crib and Madden. So we, we've been going back and forth lately. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get up on them. So are, are you the type that play with the Vikings and then boost your ratings up to like 99 and just throw to yourself every play? I used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> when I was small, I definitely used to do that. But uh, now that I'm already on the game, okay. uh, I don't really have to. So uh, I just go in franchise and just, you know, build it mm-hmm. up. But definitely what about you, the balls to itself. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and you still don't stop it. And you still don't stop it. He played, he probably had five receptions for 105 yards, two touchdowns. Because <laughs> I couldn't stop it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think nobody would complain if that happened this Sunday. Hey, five I'm sure not. <laughs> I'm sure uh, not. I'm sure Vikings fans not, not complaining either. I, I mean, out of the three brothers, who who was the worst at keeping a secret? I feel like I can I can answer this, but I'll, I'll let Jordan answer this first. Uh, the worst at keeping a secret? Um, I'll probably have to say Ricky. Mm. <laughs> I had to say Ricky too. I I was the quiet one, really. I wasn't. I was the one saying much. Yeah, just because okay. he's the little brother, and he, I guess, gets consumed with a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Well, before we end this segment, I got three rapid fire questions for both of you guys. Question number one, what was Justin's favorite player growing up? I have Jordan answer it then. I have you answer. Football? Yeah, for what? Nah, in general. Let's make this broad. Uh, definitely a, a Kyrie Irving, Irving fan. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you had the Kyrie Irving post on the wall. Kyrie. Mm -hmm. You had the uh, LeBron James post on your wall. Um, Randy Moss. Um, I, I'll stop it at those three. Any, any more that he missing out on or no? Nah, those are like the the main ones that I really, really liked. So LeBron is my main one, though. That's that's my dude. That's my guy. Mm. Favorite meal? Meal? Yeah. I have to go with that crawfish etouffee. <laughs> different. When my dad cooked it, it's different every time. What makes it different? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to ask him because <laughs> it is different every time and he knows like that's my favorite thing like he knows like if he comes to where I'm at yeah that's the thing to cook what were you saying Jordan I said I think it has to do with like the spices combination you know and we definitely had crawfish etouffee I think was at the at the beginning of August right mm -hmm. he just came over here and made it so uh, uh, during, right before camp yeah. Oh, so that's that's why that's why you had a, a crazy camp the way you did this yeah. year. Okay, you got to get the spices in, <laughs> add that to the game. Got that Louisiana <laughs> food. I'm good now. <laughs> add that to the repertoire. But well, when we come back, we're gonna talk a little ball, talk a little off the field a little bit more, but get into the game a little bit because we do got a big game coming yeah, up this week. For sure. Seven NFL NFLSU are on the field this weekend. Four on the Cincinnati Bengals. Three here with the Minnesota Vikings. So Vikings fans, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from Justin Jefferson and his brother Jordan Jefferson to preview week one's game against the Bengals on the Audible presented by Verizon. Download Vikings Now, the team's connected TV app to watch all of your favorite Vikings programming on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV. Search Vikings Now with any compatible device to begin watching videos. Watch full episodes of TV shows such as Vikings Game Plan and Vikings Connected, plus digital programming like The Voyage. Also watch game highlights, player and coach press conferences, and much more. It's vikings.com slash ctv for the fan. Join me, Paul Allen, along with former Vikings linebacker and current radio analyst Ben Lieber after every Vikings game as we host Between the Lines. Analyze the game, break it down from all angles, and discuss what it means for your favorite team moving forward. Watch each week via Vikings.com, Vikings app, YouTube, and all of the team's other digital and social platforms. For information, visit Vikings.com slash Between the Lines. All right, welcome back to the Audible presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson. Justin Jefferson is here. His brother, Jordan Jefferson, is joining us virtually. And I know we started off the last segment with the trivia question, but I want to talk a little bit of ball right here. Of course, Jordan, you've seen Jamar Chase. Justin played with Jamar Chase. He's playing against your former teammate in P2, Patrick Peterson. Like, if, if you were assessing this matchup, what would you tell Patrick Peterson on how to guard a Jamar Chase? I would tell him be ready for um, some type of physical play. Um, he's, he's shown on his film, especially if you look from his recent time uh, as a vertical threat. So just be wary of the deep ball um, and just play with confidence. You know, even though he's a young player entering the league, your profile, your resume speaks for itself. And go out here and let's get it like how we did in 08. <laughs> what will it be like just playing your your former teammates? I mean, Joe, Joey B, Jamar Chase, like y'all all won a championship together. And now being on the opposite team, have you like, has that settled in yet for you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been talking to Jamar. Uh, me and Jamar played a game with each other and stuff. So uh, we'd definitely be sharing our little uh, trash talking words <laughs> and, uh, you know, making some little, you know, own personal bets. But uh I mean, it's exciting to, to see them and to go up against them again. And uh, it's always a competition with us. Uh, mm -hmm. We're all competitors. Uh, so we all trying to outdo one another and, and get the W. And now you got the Hitman hat on. 
And you got to you got to explain that a little bit. But now, he, you know, he's he'll be in the slot. I'm sure Jamar Chase will be lined up against him also. So, like, do you talk to your teammates? Like, do you give them like, <laughs> hey, this is what he's going to do? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. They ask a few questions, but uh, okay. I mean, there's that's really not too much that I can really say that that's not on film. Uh, I mean, they asked me a little bit about Joe, uh, how, how Joe likes to play a little bit. But other than that, I feel confident in our guys and to, to make some plays and to, to D up. And I'm sure that conver- the conversation has to be different now, though, right? Like, you can't, like, eat your boy, but, like, you know what I mean? I got to spill the deets. I got to <laughs> I gotta give it to him. I got to give him the facts so we can come out on top. He not, he, hey, he's my guy, but he's not my teammate no more. So mindset is how how he attacks the game you know joey b versus his defense like does that fare well against like you know you know you know where i'm going with this yeah uh i mean he's just very very smart he's a very smart player and uh he's a competitor just like i said um he he doesn't like to go down he just like he doesn't like to slide um mm-hmm. uh, i mean he he just plays with confidence and mm-hmm. i love that about him and uh, i mean that's why you know, we just went out there and just did what we did in college because he was leading us. You know, if you have a, co- a quarterback come out with confidence, swagger, yeah. you're going to come out with confidence and swagger, too. And um, that's what helped our whole team uh, back at LSU. And we come to shut that down. Huh? All right. So I know you got personal goals. Jordan, what are your goals for J.J.? Because I know, you know, big brother, you, the, the goal probably yeah. exceeds what J.J. was just <laughs> had. Uh, the, uh, the the ultimate goal is to uh, accomplish uh, more than what was done in the first season. Uh, obviously, he finished out with fourteen hundred, so uh, fifteen hundred uh, is the ideal. You know, ten plus uh, touchdowns um, is the the standard. And you know, Justin's been working very hard during the off season, uh, during this camp. He's uh, been focused in a way that um, not I haven't seen before, but in a way that assures um, that his hard work and dedication will be shown uh, nationally. So I'm excited, uh, looking forward to this Sunday versus Cincinnati, and uh, Jay Jess will arrive in year two again. Yeah, that's her. You heard that? You got your brother in your in your corner, <laughs> and then you got the entire Minnesota community, the Minnesota fan base in your corner, yeah. cheering you on year two. You're able to meet the fans now in person or mm-hmm. see the fans in person. Is that extra juice? Of course. Um, I mean, me just coming from LSU, uh, coming coming from a 100K plus uh, fan base, uh, then coming to zero fans is totally different. And uh, I mean, it's just a, a extra level of energy that you have to bring uh, with no fans. So having fans, having that crowd, um, just just hearing it, uh, just gets you to that to that level to make you want to play football. And uh, I mean, that's that's what I miss the most about it. And uh, now to finally have it back is about to be interesting. And I'm about to get them goosebumps back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so me and Ben Lieber, we're, we're talking about you know you get nerves. Every football player gets nerves at the beginning of the game, right? And on the defensive side of the ball, he says usually until, like, he hits somebody or, like, there's a big play, like, he can get an interception, like, a tackle, and, like, he'll still be nervous. For you, being in the NFL now, you probably will feel weird if you didn't get butterflies before the game, but what removes those butterflies for you? Um, I don't really get butterflies before the game. Nah, not anymore. Um, like my first first couple of years, like my first year of college, mm-hmm. uh, I started to get nervous before games. But then I came to realize, one, I don't get the ball every play, <laughs> so there's no need for me to be nervous. And two, I just need the nerves make you make you play a different way. Right. Um, I mean, playing with confidence, playing with swagger. Uh, that's how I play at my best. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I just go out there and just try to prove down the the best on the field and uh, I believe that I'm one of the best players uh, at my position so I mean I'm killing anybody that lined up in front so what they need to be nervous about Uh, I love it (laughs) I love it and now I mean and now you got another year of film under your belt also so like I'm sure you look at the game different okay well now he got this tendency how has that changed for you um I mean it's been crazy uh but now to see that 
uh, my film from last year and uh, to seeing that the things that I have, uh, you know, put else I put in my bag, uh, it, it looks very good. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I look like I'm very confident in this season, just like I said. And uh, now that, just like you said, I had another year. Well, I had a year. Um, I, I know what to expect. I, you know, I, I know how the game is played. I know how fast the game is. So, uh, I mean, I wasn't nervous last year. So <laughs> this year, I'm more confident, more, you know, dipped in the water this yeah. year. So, so one to ten, excitement level. Ten. <laughs> ten. I mean, just coming off of last year, seeing my ability to. T- you know, to catch the ball and to mm-hmm. do something with it. Uh, I mean, this year is no different. Gritty's coming back after first touchdown? Yes. Okay. Yes. First touchdown, definitely Gritty. Okay. Well, if, is Kirk Cousins doing it if he scores the first rushing? Like, it, have, have you already made that pack yet? I see Jordan nodding his head right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, I, I think he is. I, I mean, we don't have no other dance for him, so. <laughs> we don't have no other dance for him, so, I, I mean, we're going to have to. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody dance in the end zone. Before we get out of here, though, man, I know you guys had a backpack event um, here in Minnesota. I I know that was there was a a big why behind that. And I want you and Jordan to explain the why you guys gave back and and, and had that event or through that event. Uh, Well, I mean, I love giving back to the community, Um, just people that are in need and uh, just people that need a help, need a boost. Um, and anything that anything helps uh, if it's giving backpacks away uh, giving supplies uh, food uh, anything so uh, we just wanted to give back to the community uh, show the community that you know I'm a good guy Uh, so (laughs) I'm a good guy and um, I just love giving back to people and see smiling faces seeing kids do the gritty yeah Uh, I mean it's just it's just a joy to see and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to doing uh, many more community uh, events. The JJS Foundation mission statement is to create transformative uh, experiences for those in the local community that are going through and need some form of motivation and aspiration to push through challenges. So putting on a backpack event um, with uh, Fearless Weekly and also Northside Achievement Zone, the north side of Minneapolis has had recent experiences that have been very uh, traumatic to the families personally. So being able to, to provide that source for the North Side was per- perfect for us. Um, the, uh, shout out to the Vikings for also donating 100 backpacks to the event that were filled with uh, folders, notebooks, supplies, calculators. And to see such a large stand, Justin, is something that we wanted to cater to his first year he wasn't able to get out in the community in a way that we wanted to last year. So the second year gives us a prime opportunity to do a uh, backpack events. And later on in the fall, we'll do uh, turkey giveaways during Thanksgiving. We'll also do a toy drive during Christmas. So uh, just look forward to the JJS Foundation. What an awesome mission statement there, Jordan. That that's just an, a phenomenal backpack event you and Justin put on. And by the way, our own Vikings dot com Tatum Ever was at the event and she captured some audio, some sound, which we'll get into right now. That's what it's all about, man. Being a kid, embracing it. Being able to see them being that happy and getting gifts brings joy to all three of us. The Minnesota Vikings partnered with Shields Tuesday to help local kids go back to school in style. He was juiced to be here. He was doing spins, you know. He was just excited. You know, we're out here on the field. Eric Kendricks, Daniil Hunter, and Justin Jefferson surprised 46 kids at TCO Stadium with the Shields bag full of clothes. You want to go to school to learn. You don't want to have to worry about anything else. I feel like it brings a lot of confidence to them because they have the supplies and the materials that they need in order to succeed. So... They just need to apply it to themselves and focus in school, and then everything will uh, pan out in the end for them. Going back to school, obviously, there's so many people that are so excited, and there's obviously people that, you know, don't have the same opportunities as everyone. So if there's any way that Shields can help, you know, we're always looking for that next opportunity. These kids reside at People Serving People, the largest and most comprehensive emergency shelter for families experiencing homelessness in Minnesota. Uh, It makes us feel warm and fuzzy, of course. Everything's about the kids, everything we do. So... I mean, it's great that the Vikings can help us participate and make their lives so much better. The players were also excited to be able to give back in person, something they couldn't do last season. 
which is why for Jefferson, it's important to be a presence in the community. I mean, I just want to show the community that I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a loving person. I love giving back. Jefferson also handed out backpacks at the Phyllis Wheatley Community Center later that night. I just wanted to see all of these kids light up with smiles and uh, just enjoy to go back to school. Jefferson ended the day with some words of advice for students heading back to school this year. Just keep going. Just keep striving. Uh, school starts in a little bit, so uh, keep doing the grades. Just keep going. Well, it was a pleasure talking to Jordan and Justin. I wish Ricky was here, but maybe next time we'll have him on. But uh, Justin, always a pleasure. Best of luck on Sunday. I'm sh like you, like your brother said, five catches, 105 yards. I think that that might be the the standard going forward. That's a standard. That's a standard. That's the lowest we can go. <laughs> Any high, we good. Awesome, man. Well, Vikings fans, thank you for tuning into the first edition of the Audible. Next week, we'll have another special guest. Can't give that away right now, but you will be seeing Justin Jefferson again. See you next week.